David Chase. Why did why did you ask that? He's uh, about my favorite uh, television producer. Tobit isn't te- uh, no, it's not for television. I don't see it. Uh, you know the the divide between television and feature films, movie theaters. It's getting slim. I haven't seen a film in a theater for two or three years. Some of it because of COVID. Uh, David Chase did The Sopranos. How genius. I don't know whether he discovered it or his readers brought it to him or whatever, but Rockford Falls is, uh, I guess I was a teenager. Now, when I was a young child, Coal Shack. I don't know if anybody remembers that. What a... I don't even know how to describe it. He's a journalist, but he takes on the occult. And uh, I think Rockford Falls is not so out of the box. I mean, it's like, it's almost like Mannix. Sopranos is outside of the box. There's all kinds of gangster movies, but it was done so well. And, uh, you know, Soprano was not, Tony was not your typical gangster. I mean, he kept it on the down low. And it, it would erupt every once in a while, but he was trying not to get caught. So uh, David Chase would be uh, ideal for Tobit. Yeah, we're talking about Tobit. I'm sorry. David Chase is a icon. I never met him. I don't know him. Is he? Is he still working? I should probably send this to maybe to his people. Uh Tobit is a lot maybe like the coal shack. Uh, I, I talked to a Lutheran minister, my Lutheran minister, and I said, why isn't Tobit in the Bible anymore? We took it out in 1923. He said, well, Luther didn't like it. Well, why didn't Luther like it? That was in 1533, uh, 500 years ago. And... Uh, He said it has magic. Well, the Bible's full of magic, Pastor. What uh, what gives there? Well, it was a little too Catholic, and it was too lending to superstition. And uh, the Catholics then and now are, I can't remember what he said, uh, susceptible, maybe, something like that, to superstition. And he was talking about Catholic mysticism. But my response, just to even things out, he knows I'm kind of the devil's advocate all the time. Uh, uh, Wild things that happen in the Bible that we like are called miracles, but if they're a little too Catholic, they're uh, called superstition, and uh, we take that Bible out, uh, that book out of the Bible. Uh, if we, you know, for every miracle, if we removed every book for a miracle that contained a miracle, we, w- we wouldn't have a Bible anymore. So I was kind of hinting at the uh, superstition. Uh 1.5 billion people know this story. And I don't know if Mr. Chase, David Chase, is Jewish or Catholic or what. It, 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 it Frankly, it doesn't matter. It's a compelling story. Uh, and 1.5 billion people are uh, taught this story as part of their religious training. Catholics, Orthodox Christians, a lot of Jews, the attentive public... Uh, are aware of this story, but it's not in the Protestant Bible. Uh, I ask a Catholic priest why it's never been made into a film. It's in the Bible. It's in half the Bibles, but it's never been made into a film. And he was, I was in Dublin at the University of, uh, uh, University College in Dublin. 
a Catholic university, so I ran into a lot of Catholics. A lot of the uh, instructors were Catholic. I was in the political science department and uh, uh, received my Ph.D. in political science, totalitarian government. So there, I didn't have that many professors who were priests and experts on the Soviet Union. Uh, but they were there on campus, and I ran into a lot, and I'm a talkative guy. Uh, my friend in Dublin said it was removed for political reasons because of American anti-Catholic uh, sentiment following World War I. And I said, he said, yeah, three years. Isn't that suspicious? Luther wanted it gone uh, since the 1500s, but it didn't get done till three years after World War I. And you Google it, and there are there's that's the most common reason uh, put out there on the internet is uh, anti-Catholic. Uh, my the Lutheran minister says uh, no, it has to do with doctrine and the magic, and uh, it wasn't political at all. Nothing about discrimination or anti-Catholicism. Uh, so it, it really doesn't matter. It's in half the Bibles. So half the world, half of the, uh, it's actually a fourth of the world, but that's a, bi that's a billion and a half movie tickets. And I would like to advance, it's in political science, coming up with a new idea is very, very rare. I mean, we're not that creative. Uh, but I have thought about this, and I, I think we should make film based on the expectations of the population. Uh, if 1.5 billion people have read it, know the words, followed along in the text, and re realize that it's letters on a page, but they haven't seen it in film, they expect it to be on film, but it never materializes. I think that's a reason to make a film. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it's not entirely a new idea. We're talking about market economics. It's demand. 1.5 people million people are knocking on the box office door. Hey, sell me a ticket. Can you really imagine Hollywood saying no? especially to a tried and true story, 3,000 years old. And either it's been rejected because of politics, and that politics that kept the film from being made, that's gone. Anti-Catholicism in the United States, Protestants uh, in open disagreement or argumentation or uh, hatred of Catholics, that's gone. Uh, in the 20s, when they're... These people are talking about the anti-Catholic -Ameri anti American sentiment. Uh, Lutherans and Catholics were at the end of the political spectrums, far left and far right. Well, guess what? They're right here now, Lutherans, Catholics. They're back to back. If it was a street fight, they would uh, turn their backs on one another and fight it out. Uh that's an analogy. They're not nobody. Nobody's gonna fight. I, we're in this big uh, rhetorical war with uh, cults, non-denominational, Unitarians, uh, and all the non-Christians, uh, especially Islam. To be honest. Uh, so what put the Lutherans and the Catholics uh, here as neighbors? Islam. I mean, we've got more. We've got far. This world has far more serious religious sectarian conflicts than Lutherans and Catholics, Protestants and Catholics. We're uh, we're good allies. So. The reason the film was not made is gone. Yes, there's, there, there's never been a, a feature-length 
uh, book based on Tobit. Uh, I hope David, I hope you know somebody in David Chase's uh, inner family on, on his uh, movie team, television team. Uh, I don't know if we can pierce the uh, celebrity moat. Uh, agents, managers, secretaries, they all uh, feel, and they're probably told that's their job to keep scripts out of David Chase's hand. I don't know if he's still working. To be honest, he's a, he's an icon. Even to do Kolshak, I, I, uh, I need to send him a, a treatment. I, I'm not sure. Maybe he knows the story. A lot of people know the story from their little kids. Uh, Sarah is a nice Jewish girl from a good Jewish family. And in my adaptation, uh, she lives in London. But she's been married seven times, and all seven marriages have re resulted in a dead husband. A demon comes and kills her new husband before the marriage is even consummated. They don't even make it to... Uh, the marriage bed. Now, a lot of people are taught this when they're little kids in Sunday school as part of their religious training. All Catholics, all uh, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, are, are, it's in their Bible and they're taught this as little kids. I think the nuns leave out the part about uh the empty wedding bed and the uh, unconsummated marriage. But little kids know what a wedding is. Little kids know what a uh, widow is. And they know in the Old Testament there was a lady and she was married seven times and a demon. You know, at seven or eight, a demon is going to stick in your mind. I guarantee you, you say the word Tobit to 1.5 billion people and they'll know what you're talking about. And I guess that's what I mean. They'll be knocking on the box office door to get in. And the reason to not make the film is gone. Uh, relig religiousness is religiousness. And uh, I think we're pretty, I think we're fairly tolerant. We're way far more tolerant about religious differences than political differences. Uh, man, on the campuses, I, I, it changed. Uh, I guess in the 90s, it was very calm. No, no, nobody's going to. Uh, when I was leaving, uh, it was getting a little bit raucous. And you had to be very, very careful not to step on anybody's toes. And I've always been trained to be right down the middle. I, I just tell them the first day I tell the truth. And I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I just tell the truth. And uh, a few will chuckle at that because the, their, their definition of Democrats and Republicans are uh, liars. So I'm, I, I'm not going to hurt anybody's feelings with here or there or anywhere especially an open-minded public uh i need a open-minded uh hollywood type that can see the value in a film that has seven jewish weddings and seven demonic murders uh, i'm not going to sue anybody the story's three thousand years old uh in the Bible, in half the Bibles, it's eight pages. And to make it into a feature film, I just took each uh, verse, literally each verse, and made a scene. So uh, it's uh, 98 pages. And uh, I would encourage you, I don't even have a long treatment. I have a query letter with which basically says, uh, seven Jewish weddings and seven demonic murders. And then if you want to know more, uh, pick up a Bible. Half the Bibles have it. It's about eight pages. You can read it like that, and uh, you'll know whether you want to make the film or not. 
All I did was change the uh, setting from uh, Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, and moved it over to Amsterdam in the 1930s. Yeah, the real story took place. Uh, original biblical text says uh, all this took place 25 to 3,000 years ago, 2,500 to 3,000 years ago, and, uh, and it happened in the desert. Well, there's something in the story that says the guy, Toby, has to cross the water to find his wife. There's certain things, I don't know, I could tell you, but it would be easier for you to read it. Uh, it would probably mean more to you if you read it. Um, okay, I feel a little scatterbrained. Uh, if you don't know the story, the, the Tobit side of the story, so everybody understood Sarah. Toby is the son of Tobit, and Tobit goes blind. He's 90, he's 80, and he goes blind. And he runs out of money, and he doesn't, he can't handle that because he's accustomed to being successful and taking care of his family. Uh, and he gets to be about 80. I'm sure he's feeling his mortality. And, uh, but he remembers some money that was put aside that he saved, deposited in a London bank when he was a kid. So it should be a fairly a large sum, uh, a retirement nest egg, a lot of money, enough to get his family through uh, his disability. They can live comfortably on the money that his son will bring back from London. So he doesn't want his son to go alone. I mean, how would you like to travel from uh, Amsterdam to London and find the bank and bring back a large sum of money without being robbed? Uh, so uh, the father prays for a companion, uh, someone to travel with him, a guide, to tra travel with him to London to pick up the money and bring it back safe. Uh, and they do that, but uh, the son's not married, and he runs into Sarah. And that's probably the, well, you can't say, it, it's a middle point of the film. Uh, how would you feel talking to a lady on romantic terms, and she said, she doesn't even have to say her reputation precedes herself. Um, well, she's had seven husbands and they're all dead like that. Uh, killed horribly by a demon. So what's going to happen to husband number eight? Oh, I, you know, and Toby, Toby uh, has a good conversation with Raphael. So, you know, I like her and I think she likes you and, uh, well, go, go the next step. Uh, talk to her father. Uh, maybe you can work something out. Uh, oh, I might be the eighth. And the devil, the demon, would come for me. Don't you see a pattern here? Raphael is, uh, he's an angel, but he doesn't, hes it's on the down low. He keeps it uh, quiet. So, uh, Toby, nobody knows who Raphael is, but he has huge power. But he looks like a bodyguard. I mean, he's there to protect the money. But he looks Toby in the eye and he says, nothing's going to happen. Uh, I'll take care of it. Your father expects me to get you and the money home safe. Just think how proud he'll be if you bring back a bride. And Sarah is a would be a beautiful bride. You know her. You've talked to her. Uh, yeah, but the demon and Raphael persuades him, marry her. I'll take care of it. I've got skills. Uh, these demons uh, have a weak spot. And I guess that's where people get worried. Oh, the demon has a weak spot. That must be magic. Uh, the weak spot is primarily faith. And uh, faith that compels you to resist. And 
it's pretty clear. I think it's clear. Uh, I can tell you how it ends. They they get married, and Raphael, when the demon comes for uh, Toby, Raphael uh, kicks his butt, ties him up, and uh, Sarah's father is in the rope business, which uh, uh, ships have to be tied, so it's a lucrative business in London. Uh, mooring ropes. So, and they're about yay big. You've seen the big ships moored to the dock with these giant, well, sometimes chains nowadays, but uh, in the third, even, they still use mooring ropes today. Uh, so, uh, Raphael wraps the demon up in this mooring rope and rolls him like a, uh, a ball of uh, yarn. Now you wrap, wrap the yarn around and make a ball. He does that with uh, mooring ropes and pushes the demon into the Thames. Well, he floats out there on the ropes, but then the ropes get waterlogged and he sinks to the bottom. And uh, you have to think, well, that's one demon we're uh, rid of. So that's not totally the end of the story. Remember, it's set in the 30s in... Uh, David Chase would love uh, the fight between the demon and the angel. Uh, a lot of his, a lot of the Jewish, and that's why I put it in the 30s in the in, in Amsterdam. Uh, people that are interested in the history of the Holocaust and uh, Judaism. I think everyone from Frame One will be thinking, "Gee, I like Tobit." He is pious, prays all the time, true believer, nice guy, helps strangers, incredibly charitable, uh, and he loves his family enough to uh, push this whole movie forward so he can find a wife for his son, uh, financial security for his family, and uh, to have grandkids. Uh, I did a lot of research. Well, before I talk about the research, let me just uh, tell you about the dilemma. Okay, the audience is going to know he's di he's going to die. He's 80 years old. We don't live forever. Most of the audience have read the Bible and know this story, and so they're going to wonder: Is he going to die in? Uh, his bed, a nice, peaceful, honorable, quiet death, peacefully in his bed in uh, his home in Amsterdam? Or will he hold on long enough for the Nazis to cart him off? And, uh, he has to die a horrible, terrifying, choking death in a... Uh, Nazi gas chamber. So I added, I added that. It's not in the Bible. Uh, the story's 3,000 years before that. So uh, that is why I put it in Amsterdam in the 1930s. That's looming over the audience's head. Everybody knows where this is going. The question is how fast it'll get there. Will it get there? And... Uh, I had a guy, and he, he I said, read the, uh, read the Bible, and then read the script, and uh, I think, I think, I think you'll like it. I think uh, David Chase would like it. Uh, it's not in the Bible anymore. It was taken out of the Bible. For political or uh, theological reasons, uh, but it'll still make a great movie. There's a lot of demand. I think David Chase would love it. I have a question uh, whether he's still working. He would be. He would be great. His reputation is huge. I grew up when there were three, cha four channels. PBS, ABC, CBS, and NBC, 
And ABC didn't really come in all that well because the station was a little bit farther from our house. But even we had a huge antenna on the house and it didn't come in totally. It came in uh, with a lot of snow. But I know Coal Shack. I know Rockford Falls. And, geez, the Sopranos uh, revolutionized television serials. I mean, without Sopranos, you wouldn't have Blake Breaking Bad. Uh, I think Netflix was largely built on that. At first, uh, I used Netflix and got the uh, DVDs by mail. But pretty much now, I watch a lot of the trailers on there. Uh, but I watch the more popular popular television series. Maybe one day I'll write one. But for right now, what I'm uh, I'm pitching is uh, Tobit. Uh, yeah, if you can help me spread the good word, it's a uh, uh, it's an old idea. Seven Jewish weddings and seven demonic murders. Uh, if a producer or a filmmaker doesn't that doesn't ring a bell with them. Uh, I don't know what will, because frankly, it's, it's never been done. It's the uh, it's the best story never told on film. All the other stories of the Bible have been covered. Yeah, think about it. I, I would like to see a Bible highlighted. Uh, when they make a film, you highlight the relevant parts. And uh, the, the only unhighlighted part should be Tobit. Uh, they've even, uh, Judith is kind of cool, but I've seen that in films. Uh, Judith is another book in the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox uh, Bibles, that uh, books that were removed by Protestants. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. I'm afraid I went on. You said 30 minutes, and uh, we're pretty close to 27. So, uh, yeah, edit whatever you want. Take it here and there. I, you, you can't take me out of context because the context is 3,000 years old to start with. What am I going to do? Ruin it? Appreciate your time. Thank you.